Live from Vienna, Austria, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Europe 2016, brought to you by Nutanix. Here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome to the close of SiliconANGLE Media, the Cube's coverage of Nutanix .next 2016 Europe here in beautiful Vienna, Austria. Uh, it's the uh, first time we've had the Cube here in Austria. Uh, for myself and the team, it's been a really good event. Uh, good food, good beer and wine, great art, culture, music, all of that. Uh, but the reason we've been here is to talk to Nutanix, uh, a company that recently went IPO. Uh, NTNX on the ticker stand, uh, had a really good pop when it opened, uh, valued over $3 billion, and uh, they, they brought in over 1,200 uh, partners and customers uh, here in the EMEA. Theater, and we had the opportunity to talk to uh, many of the executives, including uh, Dearest Pandey, the CEO, uh, partners, thought leaders in the space, uh, some guest speakers uh, like uh, uh, the professor from Columbia University. Uh, we had Kate Russell, an author uh, and journalist, uh, as well as a number of customers, including some service providers. So, uh, first thing, let, let, let's break through uh, you know, what, what happened at the event itself. Uh, Nutanix. Uh, you know, made a number of announcements. It's uh, the 5.0 uh, version of their release, really expanding uh, their progression that they've talked about, moving uh, from storage uh, through uh, really the, the, the virtualization layer through cloud uh, is what they position as enterprise cloud. Uh, the, the theme they've done is enterprise cloud, hashtag on my terms is the, the marketing campaign that they're doing. And what this means is that they want to give customers uh, some of the experience that you would expect from the cloud, what we at Wikibon call called true private cloud uh, means that uh, the way I manage it uh, is uh, you know, much a simpler environment. Uh, they talked about uh, the learnings that Nutanix had, uh, what we always said from the hyperscale players because some of the early engineers came from companies uh, like Google and Facebook, uh, but the example they gave in the keynote is Amazon. Amazon, big player in the space, and they highlighted both the one-click capability of Amazon.com as well as the cloud nature uh, of Amazon itself uh, and uh, building out they added to the network capabilities uh, of, of what are now available, working with uh, both networking and security partners uh, to build out the rest of that, that base infrastructure stack, uh, as well as uh, you know, a, a number of pieces, uh, you know, container services, file services, object services, uh, everything around the container, uh, the, the storage uh, side of the stack, uh, and uh, you know, so many pieces uh, that, 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 that they're doing uh, in that environment. Um, you know, customers seem really happy. Uh, you know, the, it, it's still early days, especially here in Europe. Uh, they, they say only about 35% of their total revenue today uh, is outside of North America. Uh, so they've got lots of room for growth and uh, it, it's a small team uh, globally, but growing fast. And of course, one of the concerns people have is that can they keep uh, the, the passion and the high quality quality uh, of people uh, in the company, uh, you know, when they start adding, you know, you know, dozens, hundreds more. Uh, I think there are a little over 2,000 employees today. So, uh, want to just, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about the good things they're doing. Uh, you know, where, where are the areas that, you know, customers should kind of understand? First of all, uh, there's no one company is going to have every solution for what you need. So, on the one hand, I say it, it, it's great that uh, Nutanix is expanding its ecosystem. Uh, there's a good uh, partner pavilion here with a number of companies uh, in here. Uh, they are still some of the big players, uh, specifically VMware uh, and Cisco, where the relationship is, is a bit challenged. Uh, I think it's over 70% of uh, Nutanix customers still run VMware, and the you know, corporate relationship between VMware uh, and Nutanix uh, is, is a difficult one. That being said, when I talked to, uh, th there was a, uh, a service provider I talked to on the, uh, on the show uh, this week, as well as a couple of customers, they're using using VMware, they don't have any challenges uh, with Nutanix, but as Nutanix expands what they want to do, um, how will that bump up and put them into contention uh, with what VMware's doing? Um, from a Cisco standpoint, uh, Nutanix expanded what they're supporting on Cisco. They're now supporting Blade servers uh, and claim to be the, the 
you know, first and only hypervisor, hyperconverged company that can offer uh, their solution on blade servers. Uh, Cisco uh, is not exactly on board uh, with this engagement. It's what we call a meet in the field. Uh, Presidio has worked with them on that, but it's challenging there. Uh, and, and on the VMware side, VMware is pushing very hard uh, with the likes of uh, the, their vSAN solution, uh, and that's the VxRail offering uh, that they've got with the Dell EMC pieces. So uh, there will be some strong competitors in the marketplace. Uh, vSAN has more customers overall. However, our numbers are that if you just look at kind of the raw revenue, uh, you know, Nutanix is still in the lead. Uh, VMware's a little bit tougher to get at total revenue just because they sell only the software piece. Nutanix in, you know, the vast majority of the environments sell uh, the appliance too. Uh, that, that brings up kind of the OEM angle, the, that Dell EMC relationship is one that will be one we'll want to watch uh, you know, for quite a bit here. Uh, the numbers I've heard from the Dell EMC side, it's you know, over a thousand nodes, I think it was like 1,200 nodes that, that they sold uh, of Nutanix, which is a sizable percent. I, I think they said in a recent quarter, uh, Dell believes they were about a quarter uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the overall business. Uh, Nutanix does not necessarily recognize all of that revenue uh, at, uh, uh, the, when it is sold uh, because there are services and software involved, so they um, take it in uh, more as a subscription model. Uh, so understanding kind of the flows of money are always something uh, we try to pick apart. Now as a public company, we will have more data and be able to understand that. And Nutanix, to, to their credit, have been uh, you know, very transparent about what they're doing. Um, last thing I really want to look at is, just for enterprises themselves, uh, when you look at how I make my environment simpler, obviously there, there, there's lots of proof points that customers uh, that are doing hyper-converged infrastructure uh, do simplify their operations. Uh, hopefully from a capital expense standpoint, um, it is uh, you know, a, a cost savings, but from an operational that simplicity standpoint it is really where uh, it, it is better. Uh, and that does not mean necessarily that you're lowering headcount. What it does mean is you can really focus on things like uh, the digital transformation, uh, you know, other projects that you need to do internally, uh, things like you know, backup, security, and the like. Uh, there's lots of ways uh, that we make it that, that customers, uh, and especially IT staff, uh, can deliver uh, for the business. Um, the caution, the thing I've been poking at this week is, uh, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure, or even the, the full vision that what Nutanix has, is, is not a panacea. Uh, uh, companies need to understand what they should do themselves, uh, what they should look to offerings, uh, you know, different offerings to be able to make things easier. For example, I haven't had much discussion about software as a service, SaaS. Uh, most companies, if it's an application that I can move to SaaS, uh, that's probably going to be easier for my, my environment. Uh, service providers are a great way uh, to get engaged. Uh, service providers uh, can not only you know, they could host your entire stack for you, uh, or you can bring your own hardware, you can bring your application, there's that spectrum of uh, what uh, I bring in control versus what I can let go of because maybe it's not core to my business or something that I'm greatly skilled at. Uh, the, the great point made by one of the service providers here is if you look at utilization of resources, uh, the average enterprise uh, greatly underutilizes what they had, and even if you buy a simple, small blocks uh, of infrastructure uh, like Nutanix, you are unlikely to reach uh, the level of utilization uh, as if uh, I was an actual service provider or a public cloud provider. So um, there are always those trade-offs. We, we, we tend to overbuy uh, you know, what we're doing. Uh, the, the, the long and short is that we have uh, a lot more flexibility uh, in these offerings here. Uh, we're always really excited to be able to dig into this technology. Uh, on the Wikibon site, wikibon.com, you can see lots of research that we've done on what we call server SAN. Uh, we had uh, you know, all the revenue, uh, market forecasts, we actually go out for 10 years, and it is our belief that in five years, the hyper-converged uh, uh, category will be the majority of sales uh, for kind of the traditional enterprise environment. So that's replacing what was known as SAN uh, and NAS. Uh, so, so that's on the research side. Uh, from the video side, siliconangle.tv is of course where you can see all the videos. Uh, all the videos that we did at this show uh, will be there, many other shows. I've got one more show this year which is Amazon reInvent show. So uh, while I said, you know, I, I have great kudos to Nutanix, uh, 
that they've had, you know, a lot of people showing up at their U.S. show in Vegas uh, and uh, their, their uh, show here in Europe. They'll do another show uh, in the U.S. and in Europe next year. Uh, Amazon is just a force of nature. They're expecting 25,000 people uh, at that Las Vegas show, and I'm excited that I'll be there co-hosting with John Furrier for three days of broadcast there uh, with that exploding ecosystem. Uh, so uh, as we reach the end of the program, uh, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for all the guests here. Uh, big shout out to the entire team here. Uh, Seth, Patrick, and Greg, uh, really appreciate you guys uh, making the trip, uh, you know, checking out some of the, the local culture here. Uh, thank you so much for watching theCUBE, and we look forward to seeing you at the next show.